Good morning. Great to have you with us once again. Today we start a three-week sermon focus titled, the reason, There is a Reason and a Season. There is a reason and a season. I hope you'll join us over these next couple of weeks as we explore that topic. One of the most depressing things I hear people say is, I just don't see the purpose. What's the point? It might be to do with their marriage. It might be to do with money. It might be around how they're doing spiritually, their Christian walk, what they think of the church. It might be about their job. What's the point? I just don't see it. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm frustrated. Why should I keep trying? It doesn't seem to make any difference. There is a reason and a season. People don't like pain. I'm sure you would agree. Pain is not a pleasant thing to have to deal with or live with, be it emotional or physical. If people can see a purpose in the pain, no pain, no gain, they will often cope and push through it. Pain without purpose is crippling. Think of childbirth, running a marathon, recovering from surgery. It is pain with a purpose. Many people have gone through painful times over recent months and weeks. And for many, there seems to be no purpose to it. We need to just get through this season. It's been hard. It's been frustrating. It's been confusing and stressful. It's been crippling. Maybe you have questions. God, where are you? God, show me the way forward. We are resilient people and we can endure much. We have risen above and found new ways to live our day-to-day -day lives. It's just for a season. In Luke 22, verse 31 and 32 we read, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you all as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Jesus was talking to Simon, whose name became Peter. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. So basically the devil wants permission to attack you, to try to hurt you, to test you, to put you through some trials. And then Jesus says, but I've prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. The devil wants permission to attack you. And Jesus says, OK, right. It's an interesting verse. It's an interesting piece of scripture. But don't worry, mate, I'll be praying for you. Did you notice that Jesus didn't cause this, but for whatever reason, he allowed it? I'll be praying for you. If I wanted someone to be praying for me, hey, I'll be very thankful it was Jesus, the Son of God. Maybe some of us feel like the devil has been on the attack. Maybe it's been painful, frustrating. Sometimes God's preparation comes packaged as pain. There is purpose in your pain. God might be using the pain that we are enduring to do something in us before he does something through us. Now, Peter didn't make the best choices all of the time. He didn't do the right things all of the time. If you know of his story throughout the Gospels, I'm sure you can identify with him sometimes. Jesus predicts his death 
And we have this from Peter in Matthew 16, 22 and 23. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Imagine that scene. Get behind me, Satan. Peter, you've got it wrong. You're focusing on the wrong things. In the Garden of Gethsemane, it's Matthew, it's chapter 26, verse 39. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Peter, couldn't you guys stay awake? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Couldn't you stay awake? Couldn't you just support me in prayer for an hour? You're still sleeping, still resting? Peter, Peter, at Jesus' arrest, our mate Peter features again. It's John chapter 18, 10 and 11. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servants, cutting off his ear. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Poor old Peter. He draw, pulls out his sword, cuts off the ear. He couldn't even get that right. No doubt he was heading for his head. The standout disappointment and the painful road Peter walks is in the denial of who Jesus is all those years. All those opportunities, sitting with him, listening and experiencing the Messiah. And in the closing story, those words ring out to us. Sorry, I don't know him. You got the wrong guy. Luke 22, verse 60. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Their eyes met. Then Peter remembered the words the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Where was God in all of Peter's failures? God, where are you? He might have denied Jesus, but Jesus did not deny him the gift of grace. The package may come wrapped as pain, as disappointment, as stress and frustration. But there might just be a greater blessing on the other side, friends. As you've learned something greater about yourself, as you've learned something greater about God. One of the most quoted verses in the Bible is Romans 8.28. Maybe it's been your go-to verse during this season. During this time of change. During this time of social distancing, distancing and restrictions. Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Who've been called according to his purposes. God is on our side. He is at work. We just need to see past the pain. The disappointment. We just need to see past this current season. 
I read this the other day and I want to finish with it. Don't underestimate what God is doing in your season of waiting. Don't underestimate what God is doing in our season of waiting. No pain, no gain. You are Peter, Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Every tongue and every nation, the Christian church. There is always a reason and there is always a season. Amen. Thank you for listening today. May God bless you.